afternoon everyone and uh, welcome again to this second lecture of introduction to anthropology and today we're going to talk about the subfields of anthropology. I already mentioned those subfields in the previous lecture, what is anthropology. So this lecture is going to be short. I just want to introduce you with each one of those subfields. It will not take too, take too long and this lecture is actually related to the reading one I give you and um, it will just give you an overview of uh, those four subfields. So you already know them um, and probably you are mentioning them right now. Uh, just quickly, here are the four subfields. Remember, um, cultural anthropology, this is actually the one we will focus on during the, the five next weeks. Um, archaeology, linguistics, linguistic anthropology, and physical, also called biological anthropology. So, very quickly, very briefly, I will introduce you with each one of these subfields. Okay? So, one slide per subfield. Let's start with physical or biological anthropology. This one is actually probably uh, the biggest one here because it covers many different topics. So under the branch biological or physical anthropology, there are actually other uh, branches. We have uh, primatology, for example, or uh, genetics or forensic anthropology and so on. So this is one of the largest subfield of anthropology. Now, what is it about? As you might have guessed from the name itself, biological or physical anthropology, it deals with uh, the physical, the anatomy of uh, humans. So this will be related to biology and to what we call hard science. All right, so it focuses on um, biological organism and also on human evolution. That's why primatology is also under um, this subfield. So it's the growth and development of human and of human adaptation. All right, so it can be about, this is the first one, um, the study of the human species and how it has changed physically over time, all right? Uh, we know, thanks to archaeologists and paleoanthropologists, that um, the first hominid that appeared uh, was approximately 6 million years ago. So from that first one until now, how did Homo sapiens and ancestors of Homo sapiens evolve, right? So this is called biological evolution. Now, like I just said, there is also the study of primates, okay, primatology. And um, here it will look into, so mostly chimpanzees, apes at large, but mostly chimpanzees and uh, gorillas, since they are the closest um, ape, um, they are the closest um, um, so closest to humans in terms of uh, body structure, DNA, um, physical appearance somehow, and so on. Uh, then there is what we call uh, genetic inheritance. So here, anthropologists, biological anthropologists working in that area will look into um, physical characteristics that humans have. So the skin color, the eyes color, um, the um, hair texture and so on. Look into those characteristics and uh, trying to understand what we inherited from our parents, from the uh, previous ancestors and so on. And there is a more recent uh, form of um, biological anthropology, a more recent sub-sub-branch called forensic anthropology. So here, um, this and that's why I uh, added here an illustration of the TV show Bones that you might know. 
Uh, in this TV show, the main character is actually a forensic anthropologist, the lady, and it's basically the use of um, physical uh, skeletal characteristics and analysis to try to solve um, criminal cases, what we call cold cases, so unsolved um, uh, cases. So this is also another use of, um, of um, anthropology and more specifically biological anthropology. I didn't come on the picture here of the, um, the lady with the chimpanzee. Uh, you might know her, she's, uh, she's uh, very famous from also the large, a large audience. Her name is uh, Jane Goodall and uh, she was one of the first one to study chimpanzees and um, she's now retired, she's now more than 80 years. However, she's still, she's still very active um, in different kind of environmental associations. She tries to um, help to preserve the environment and also, of course, the chimpanzees. She has done an amazing work. She practically lived among chimpanzees and she managed to um, to provide us with many uh, data and uh, from her work and many others, of course, uh, we have been able to compare the um, characteristics of chimpanzees and of uh, us homo sapiens. So this is biological or also called physical uh, anthropology field. Now let's move into archaeology. So archaeology. Archaeology is very specific uh, since it uses um, some techniques and methods that are really only used by archaeologists. So basically what is archaeology? It's the study of uh, what we call prehistory, so the history that happens before the invention of writing and uh, early history of cultures around the world. So archaeology tries to understand uh, how did human lived in the past, basically, without, um, without in general, any, um, any source of writing such as um, books or, or but by using mainly artifacts, artifacts and material. Um, so here, archaeologists um, are very important since they help to understand how did culture evolved. So in any part of the globe and actually uh, a different era. It's not only about prehistorical cultures, but it could be also about more uh, recent cultures and time. Um, so here I have added a link to watch a short movie that will introduce you with the methods that are used in archaeology because that's one of the main um, one of the main characteristics of, of archaeologists. They will use um, different types of um, different types of um, methods but mainly excavation and uh, so they will dig in order to uh, try to found artifacts so stone tools pottery um, bones plant remains anything that um, that is coming from the past and that could tell a story about a specific culture or some specific people that lived before. So it aims at um, understanding about how people lived in the past. I will also add this link in, um, in, the, in the portal so that you will be able to, to watch it independently. Here I added a famous picture of uh, Indiana Jones because when we talk about archaeologists, that's usually what comes to mind, um, this Hollywood character, Indiana Jones. Of course, the way it has been 
um, filmed here is uh, not exactly the reality of archaeologists. However, it was a way to popularize um, archaeology. So this is also part of what we call anthropology. Now, let's talk about linguistic anthropology. Linguistic anthropology here deals, of course, with language, linguistic language. So here, um, there are three main sub-sub-branches of uh, linguistic anthropology. Uh, first, linguist anthropology can look at um, the language itself and try to describe it. So the way a sentence is formed and uh, structured, all right? Um, then, uh, so the function and the history of um, languages, this is the second one. So how a language changes over time, right? So this could be also of an interest for linguist anthropologists. And finally, uh, the study of language from a social and cultural perspective. So here, it's everything that is related to human communication process, right? How do humans communicate and how does it work? So here, um, linguistic anthropology, of course, is the branch of anthropology that studies human languages. And there is an emphasis on language and culture. We're going to have a chapter discussing this. And this is actually somehow one of my uh, main area of research because I did my PhD both in cultural anthropology and in linguistic anthropology. Here I have added uh, a cartoon that shows probably what is supposed to be Inuit people living in the up to the north uh, pole or maybe south but most probably north. Um, and one is saying to the other, did you know that suburban white males have over 100 words for long? <clears throat> and here, uh, it's supposed to be funny because here, as you can see, there is no lawn, there is no green, there is no grass, there is only snow. <clears throat> Sorry, and Inuit people are famous uh, for having more than 50 words to describe uh, snow. So that's, you know, just to show and to illustrate that uh, language is obviously very much connected to the, to the environment and to the cultural context of a place. Finally, the one that we will discuss throughout those uh, five remaining weeks, cultural anthropology. This is most probably the, um, the most... So it is the most uh, popular one and probably uh, the biggest one. Uh, cultural anthropology is also called sometimes social or socio-cultural anthropology. So basically here it's the study of customary patterns in human behavior. It's the study of thoughts and feelings and um, behavior, like I said. So here, it usually studies uh, living cultures and societies, right? And it will unface on um, it will unface on the holistic nature of cultural systems to try to compare different cultures and to try to look for universal between uh, cultures. Here, um, it deals also with culture and traditions of a group of people. For instance, here I have added a picture of uh, the Maasai people in living in um, both in Kenya and in Tanzania. And um, here um, we found, in terms of methods, we found a specific one called ethnography. So we'll talk about ethnography while we will discuss the, um, the chapter on fieldwork and ethnography. So I will tell you more about specific methods developed and used here in cultural anthropology. All right, so that was it for this chapter. So by the end of this chapter, you should be familiar with these subfields. 
of course you don't have to um you don't have to have an exhausted extended sorry knowledge about each one of these subfields you should just be aware that there are four and um, that they are under the main disciplines of anthropology okay so biological or physical anthropology archaeology linguistic anthropology as well as cultural anthropology I wish you a very nice weekend and I will see you next week to talk about culture and to try to define culture. Thank you. Goodbye.